Good morning YouTube, welcome to the Reptile Barn. Today we are going to talk about what should I feed my reptile. Um. Behind me, we have rats, we have mice, we have more mice, we have more mice, we have rabbits, we have salmon, we have more rabbits, we have gerbils, we have more salmon, we have quail. We have all sorts of things in here to feed a reptile, right? Mostly snakes, but also lizards. Um, today's topic really though, I'm gonna talk about rats, all right? This package has one medium rat left in it from Perfect Prey, who is awesome. Everyone should get their rats from Perfect Prey. They're <laughs> not paying me for this, I'm just saying, they're the best. Um, Rodent Pro is pretty good too, but Perfect Prey. Mm. So, I'm gonna move because it's really cold right here. I'll be right back. So, in the reptile hobby, it's kind of standard to use rats, if at all possible. Um, this has created the belief that rats are the healthiest thing to feed your reptile, especially if it's a snake. I think this is total baloney. Uh, I've talked a little bit about this before, but it just, it irritates me, so I'm gonna bring it up again. Um, <laughs> we use rats because they are legal almost everywhere, and because they are convenient. That's it. That is why we use rats. Their size and their productivity, as far as breeding, uh, is very, very, very convenient for us to use. They breed really, really quickly. They grow quickly. They're efficient. You know, the amount of feed you put in as far as the rats you get out. Um, they have huge litters. They're easy to keep, right? Um, most people can get their rat colony to breed year round. There's just, there's a million reasons that they're convenient. Um, they're not usually aggressive. They're pretty good. You know, you don't, you're not getting bit all the time. Now I'm saying all these things, but here in Alaska, it's actually illegal. I have been bit by rats when I've messed with them. So, you know, there's exceptions, but in general, they really are super, super good feeder animals for our convenience. What about for our snakes? Well, the amount of experience out there says that clearly they're a pretty good feeder item because people are getting their ball pythons up to 40 years old on rats and people are getting their whatever uh, to a nice healthy age, breeding year after year after year without too many problems. Uh, clearly, rats are pretty good nutrition for a reptile. But when people try to say they're healthier than X, you know, you, a mouse or a rabbit or whatever, or, or even birds, they're full of it. Now, they'll point to studies saying the protein to fat ratio of a rat is, you know, X and Y, but with mice, it's this and so this the rat one is better but what does better mean that totally depends on the nutritional requirements of the animal eating it and the nutritional requirements of a ball python a slow moving very warm climate big bodied snake are going to be way different from the nutritional requirements of a garter snake or a king snake right very different or an eastern indigo or a Dominican red mountain boa. Very, very different. Um, lizards. People feed a lot of rats to their lizards. Uh, you know, their monitors and things like that. And maybe that's fine. These are carnivorous animals. But most of these monitors are starting out life in the wild as insectivores. Some of them remain insectivores the rest of their life. Now that is meat, right? But it's also a ton of chitin and things in the exoskeleton of the insect that are totally different from what you'd find in a rat. Their system might not be used to fur. Um, they might need the particular types of fats that are found in an insect that aren't found in a, in a rodent. Anyway, my point is just the nutritional requirements of the animal you are feeding are more important than discovering what the nutritional values of the prey items are. Because you can't say, Rats are healthier than mice for this animal if you don't know what this animal needs. And nobody does. There's been plenty of research done saying this is how much protein is in a rat of this age. 
This is how much fat. This is how much fur you're going to get and extra matter. We know all that stuff. We can point to it and we can compare it to the, the same uh, ratios in a rabbit or in a chicken or in a quail or in a mouse or in a whatever. Uh, but we don't have research done on what does a boa constrictor require in its diet? How much protein to fat? We don't know. And so to point out rats as the healthiest option is ridiculous. In fact, bringing up boa constrictors, often boa constrictors get so big that people are feeding really big, huge, older rats to their boa to try and keep them happy, right? Well, those really old rats are really, really fat. And boas often have problems processing that much fat. This is known. So maybe a rat isn't the perfect item for it. Maybe a rabbit, which is much lower in fat, would be a lot better for that boa constrictor. Maybe not for an anaconda. Maybe it, maybe an anaconda is processed things different. I don't know. They're, they're a boid, but they're not a, you know, a red-tailed boa. So my point is just... We have raised rats up to this level where we're like, man, I think that this snake is worth less money because it's not eating rats. Okay, that's fine. But that doesn't mean the snake is less healthy. It just means that you don't want it because you like the convenience of the rat. Those are two different things. And as the consumer, you have every right to say, oh, I'm not going to get an animal unless it's eating what I want to feed it. But you can't then take it that next step and say, I'm doing it because it's best for the animal. No, you're not. It's best for you, right? Uh, I try and get lots of my animals onto rats because they're convenient. But I'm not sitting here telling this ball python that really wants mice, you're being less healthy because you're eating five mice as opposed to one rat. In fact, striking and coiling five mice for a meal instead of one rat is probably a lot better exercise for an animal that lives most of its life in a little tub than if it just eats one prey item. That's just, again, this is not based in research. This is just my thoughts that I'm spewing out at you because it frustrates me how much people have glorified the rat <laughs> uh, in reptile keeping. Uh, I, I know I'm being melodramatic. Liz behind the camera here is laughing at me. I'm sorry. But it's true, isn't it? Uh, I mean, people no, really, uh, to the point where they want the price of the animal to drop if it's not on rats. That's crazy. Um... Yeah, no, I get it. And we get really funny looks when we tell people that we feed our snakes things like gerbils or salmon or quail because they're like, right. oh, why would you right. do anything but rats? Now, our eastern indigos, they're kind of a special case because they are a known generalist. They will eat anything and they're not going to get stuck on one prey item. This is something to bring up. As long as I'm talking about all these reasons why rats aren't the best, at least it's something that we know your snake can thrive on for its entire life and breed and all of that and be healthy. Whereas if it got stuck on a quail or a chick from like, you know, a chicken, maybe it couldn't. I don't know. I don't know too many people who have fed their ball python exclusively poultry. My guess is that in the wild, that is not their diet, right? I, I'm pretty confident in saying that they're eating a lot of rodents in the wild. So if your ball python really likes chicken and it will only eat chicken now because that's what it likes, then ball pythons do do this, <laughs> then you might have a problem. So... That's something to consider. Most of these extra prey items we're feeding, we're feeding to our indigos, we're feeding to our monitors, things that will happily eat anything if it smells vaguely like food. Um, but the ball pythons, that's not the case, right? Many, many snakes will get kind of stuck on a prey item. They'll, they'll find their favorite and uh, they'll go months if they have to on a, a starvation fast, trying to wait you out until you offer it what it wants again. Uh, this is very aggravating, but it is true. So don't just be like, oh, well, variety is best, right? So I'm going to feed it all sorts of stuff. Be careful. If you don't have good access to a constant supply of you know, African soft fur rats or gerbils or something that ball pythons are known to really like, and you feed it to them two or three times because you just want to, it might not ever take rats again. So think about that. I'm not, I'm not trying to say feed this huge varied diet to your ball python. Rats are great for ball pythons. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. In fact, people who've been keeping ball pythons for decades and decades and decades who have had a ball python from a baby all the way through adulthood to its death, which can be more than 30 years. Literally, I think the world record is 47 years for a ball python. Yeah, that's an old snake. Um, on rats, their whole life. So they, they can thrive on rats. If that's what you've got, please keep feeding them rats. That's great. 
I don't want to get into the live versus frozen thawed debate right now. Uh, all I will say is, if you're new to reptiles, you're going to hear a lot of people tell you, don't feed your snake live food. That's irresponsible. That's being a bad pet owner. Uh, I disagree with that. We could talk about that at length in another vlog. Um, I, in fact, maybe we'll fill another vlog about that because that's another thing that I feel strongly about. And I think that people with their really strong opinions, not based in science, are confusing newcomers to the hobby. And I don't like that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please let me know your thoughts on rats. Yes, we do feed all sorts of crazy stuff to our indigos, but not necessarily the ball pythons, pretty much rats. Some of them are on mice if because we start most of our babies on mice just because they tend to start faster uh, with live food. But uh, mice and rats is a good staple for ball pythons. We do have our wild caught female on gerbils um, and she seems to do great with that. But other than her, it's rats and mice. Oh, I lied. We have a few of our older, bigger females actually eating little small rabbits. Um, not, you know, fresh born that are just, you know, a little bag of bones, but uh, maybe four or five week old rabbits, just like this big, yeah. um, about the size of a really big, like a large or an extra large rat, right? Um, but, uh, and they've done great on that, and we're taking flack for that. Uh, so thank you for watching. Until next time, we're the Reptile.